There is something that bothers me about Black Panther. Wakanda is a secret, technologically super-advanced country wedged between Ethiopia, Kenya, and Sudan. They have remained hidden and insular for all of history. However, for movies set in Africa about Africans, Black Panther is almost ludicrously America-centric in its message. In no small part, this is due to the villain, Killmonger, who was a superhero equivalent of the extremist origins of the Black Panther Party. He was raised in L.A., and so is extremely focused on the problems of blacks in America, and specifically mentions the slave trade in his dying words. However, there is a problem. Wakanda hasn't only turned its back on Africa during European colonization, but the entirety of its history. Don't forget, European traders didn't capture slaves. They bought them at existing slave markets. Slavery is as old as history and almost universal throughout all human civilization. And transporting captured slaves to other countries is almost as old. Slavery has also continued in Africa to this present day. It was only criminalized in Chad and Niger in the 21st century. Throughout all this time, Wakanda didn't care. When Shaka Zulu founded his empire, starting a period known as the Crushing, leaving millions dead, Wakanda didn't care. This was hardly an isolated incident, as empires rose and fell, rolling over the African plains, with alternating good rulers and villains. Tens or hundreds of millions have died due to the unrest over the millennia. Even when Egypt collapsed into anarchy on their own border, Wakanda didn't care enough to intervene. Continuing in modern times, with constant political unrest, political instability is rampant. Tyrants and military juntas rule substantial chunks of the continent. There are still over half a million people in slavery. AIDS infection rates are as high as 20%, and almost every country has an average income that falls below America's poverty line. In all of this, Wakanda didn't care. Outside of Africa, Blacks face discrimination on almost all of the planet. In many countries, China and India most notably, racial discrimination is carried out openly and officially. However, instead, Black Panther focuses on Los Angeles as a center of black oppression. While part of this is due to T'Challa's personal connection to his uncle, Let's look at the wisdom of this choice. This area has a large number of vehicles and kids freely playing basketball both day and night. The uncle's apartment is fairly spacious and he has working electricity and air conditioning. On a global scale, this area is already in the 1%. Even some areas of America are substantially worse than this. Now. Partially, this is the fact that Hollywood is bad at portraying poverty. However, if you compare the crime rates of Los Angeles and even relatively wealthy and stable parts of Africa, it's not even comparable. South Africa has a murder rate four to five times that of LA. We don't even have statistics for most of the other countries. The crime rate is so high and organization is so poor that even murder isn't reported. Now, race relations in America aren't what we hoped they'd be. But we have devoted a substantial amount of the past 50 years trying to fix this. There is no official racial discrimination against anyone. And people can achieve any level of power regardless of race. On the other hand, Many areas of the world are right where we were 60 years ago, and many are worse than that. The message of Black Panther, 
while it works politically for Americans and Europeans. It also reduces all of African history to that of an oppressed people. For a movie whose art celebrates African culture so much, it almost seems to completely ignore or even eliminate African motivation and initiative and blame everything on an outside force. It comes across as tone deaf and almost willfully ignorant of the plight of the truly oppressed in the world in order to point the finger at Europeans. If Wakanda wanted to help people, they could do it best by simply lowering the illusion and stabilizing the entire region, including Sudan, the Congo, and Ethiopia. This would be a far better use of resources than building schools in the richest country on the planet. As an epilogue, I actually have a counterpoint from my wife. Her thoughts were that it's not Wakanda's job to police the world or control Africa. She compared it to the American hegemony that has embroiled us in countless police actions and endless wars for people that don't necessarily even want us in their country. Her thoughts are that they don't have a white man's burden to solve Africa's problems any more than America does. So, thanks for listening, y'all. And I would like your opinions on whether any parts of this movie's message ring hollow for you, or if you think that I'm missing the mark. Until next time, y'all.